but I still feel your soul. Time to change. Yeah, she so wanted to get it. Yeah. But you gotta go out there and get it. You gotta know your mark. You gotta take the mark. You know? Let's go, soldier. Good night, good night, good night. This is Linus on the Rise coming to you tonight. I pray that all of you all out there are, um, are doing well and uh, you are staying safe in the midst of um, this calamity and um, upheaval and unrest that is going on all over the world right now. Um, some of you all are um, aware of the truth and know about all the current events. And this is including all of the inclement, inclementing weather and um, that is going on around the world. You know, um, uh, really bad weather, serious flooding, flooding that has um, that's occurring in Russia, Germany, um, Yemen. Oman, you know, even some parts of Iran, I believe, and Canada, all over the world is experiencing um, severe inclementing, inclementing weather right now. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, not counting the, 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 the deaths, um, how people are dying, and, you know, police out there are just like running rampant, arresting people you know, for just ridiculousness and, you know, shooting people unjustly, you know, it's just crazy. And, you know, this, this you know, I'm, this is a quick topic tonight. And this is really um, to concur with um, black boys, young men are in danger. Um, I just didn't have enough time to communicate all of my thoughts. You know, what I did do was talk about the dangers of engaging in homosexuality, in homosexuality behavior. Um, so, you know, before I get started on this segment, let's start with the scriptures uh, because this is what this is about. And um, we're going to start off with Le um, Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13. And um, which I think is quite uh, suitable for this topic, okay? Again, we need to remind people, um, if a man lies with a male as with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall be put to debt their blood is upon them. Okay. Okay, so um you know the first segment that I covered it was um really outlining you know I talked about what really occur in the black family that is like that has made these types of um, molestation of these young boys and young men so prevalent and so um, they've been so exposed to these type of men is because of the dismantling of the black family with the black woman against the black man. You know, this is separation and the breakdown of the black family, you know. And we have no fathers in the home. There's no fathers in any of these, you know, many of these black black homes, predominantly. The, the, the numbers, the percentages, you know, is extremely high. And we talk about, um, you know, 
how that, you know, it really does make it easier um, for these type of men to step in and influence these young boys into this kind of behavior. Um, because there's no father, there's no, you know, no father there to protect his son, you know, and to give his son proper guidance as, you know, how and what is right and wrong in this world. Uh, not just from, um, um, I guess, I, I don't want to just say, you know, of course a moral standard, but more importantly a spiritual aspect, right? There's no spiritual foundation. Excuse me. And, um, you know, and with that, you have these predators that uh, being implemented in the black community to um, bring about this homosexual agenda, right? And um, as I said before, this gentleman that have been recently exposed, Africa Bombarda is his name, um, I said there's many of them like them around. We just, they just haven't been um, revealed as yet, but they will be revealed, okay? Because everything that's in the dock is going to come out to the light. So all of those predators out there, I mean, I'm sending you all a message. If you all are out here doing this, it's just a matter of time before you will be exposed. You will be exposed, okay? It's just a matter of time. It's your turn is coming, believe it or not. And, um, you know, I just went into all of the, um, also the dangers of engaging in homosexual activity, um, the consequences, um, the medical consequences to, to, the, to, ones, to, uh, to these black boys and young men's health that engage in this type of um, behavior, and uh, the other important relevant facts to it that they are not aware is because, you know, they're keeping this information from them, right? They will never expose to you the consequences of engaging in homosexual activity because that goes against um, the status quo. And as they say, it's not politically correct, right? <clears throat> they don't really care about what the dangers are. You know, they will suffer the silence and they will keep it quiet. This is how this goes, all right? Um, you know, so, you know, going on, you know, just a, this is just a kind of a, a review and, and, and a kind um, just to kind of bring some more, uh, talk about it a little bit more in depth. You know, one of the things I had, you know, I, I, I kind of point out and made some highlights um, that I want to just kind of reflect on. And I feel like one of the biggest problems that I find in this, in our community, and, and they say that is black people have a problem talking about um, homosexuality, but I don't see how they can right now. Because it's so, it is so prevalent and pervasive right now. Um, you know, you got to talk about it, right? I mean, I have to talk about it. You know, I, I mean, we can't pretend anymore because our young black men, boys, are at severe risk. So we need to talk about it. We need to tell them how wrong it is and do our best to protect them and guide them and watch who they are, who's in their company and who they're keeping company with. Okay, what if it's a man? Who is this man? What is he about? You know, and if, if your son's going over to his house, why is your son going over to his house? What, what is your son going around to his house for? You need to understand what's going on. You know what I'm saying? And you need to be, stop being, you know, many of these women and people and these parents, because they're so consumed um, with, this, with this world, you know, the devil have you all so consumed with your jobs and with all these different things on TV and buying and shopping and it's predictive programming. You know, you're so consumed, you all have uh, really become so um, uh, very, um, what's the word I want to use? I guess I want to say you all become so, you know, not just ne necessarily launch up, but you've made it a lesser priority. You have, you know, diminished your um, priori priority in parenting. You know, you, your, 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 your parenting of your children is not the same priority as it used to be, Okay. And, you know, and as a result of that, you, a lot of these young boys are being, um, become victims. I mean, everywhere I go, I see boys by themselves, young boys hanging out by themselves. You know, there's really no older one around, to, you know, to supervise. I don't know if there's, if there's any fathers in the homes. I mean, most of these kids, they go where they want. You know, they be out all hours. You know, most of these parents don't know where their kids are going. 
on who's who what they what they who's engaging them, who's communicating with them. They don't know these things, you know. And a part of it, to be honest, is society is the one has conditioned you all and shaped you all in this way, you know, by slowly releasing your grip on your children, not counting the rules that they have created. That if you if you discipline your children, then you you know you're going to be um, arrested. All right. And from what I clear, what it distinctly says in Proverbs, okay, you all keep saying that it's not, you're not supposed to discipline your children, but you need to discipline your children. All right. That's why it's so easy for the devil to snatch them up. He made all of the rules the way it is. He made the laws the way the way it is, so he can easily take your children. It's in Proverbs. Chapter 23, verse 213. Do not withhold discipline from a child. If you beat him with a rod, he will not die. If you beat him with a rod, you will save his life from hell. Okay? So, you know, we can understand why a lot of our youth is going to fall prey to hell. Because the rules that we live in and the way the government has set up these rules now... In, in, in disciplining your children, you can't uh, spank them. You can't, you know, you know, you're very limited in how you how you're allowed to discipline your child. Your child. And, and these, most of these children, they're aware of it, right? And what they do is, you know, they kind of play games with you and, and threaten you. You know, they call the police on you, and you, you know, and especially mothers with sons because it's even harder because you're dealing with a male, you know, and he's going to grow up. And some of these sons gets bigger and taller than your mothers. And they can overpower their mothers, okay? And don't have proper respect for their mothers because there's no fathers in the house to enforce respect in the house. All right. So, you know, I just wanted to re-emphasize, you know, let's look at all of the criterias that is opening up the floodgates for our young boys to become homosexualized in our community. One of the problems I have with our black community and probably people overall, okay? You know, one of the things people will say, you all try to hide behind. You always say, you know, a black man, I have a problem with you all black men. You always, you know, when I'm listening to, you know, these other guys that come out on YouTube, you know, um, actually this was the, one of the victims who brought out the situation with um, Bombada, I think his name is Hassan, or they call him Poppy or something, you know, and, and, and not him alone, but I've heard many people talk about, oh, you know, you don't have a problem with people being gay, you know, but they have a problem with pedophiles. Let me tell you something, people, okay? You need to have a problem with people being gay because, you see, that's where it all starts, okay? But if we didn't have this massive homosexual uh, explosion on us, we wouldn't have pedophiles. How do you think a pedophile starts? He violates a child, and then that child go, go on to continue violating, and then half the time what happens is, then you have these children being turned out, and then you have this cycle uh, being perpetuated. Then this, then the abusee is now, is either a couple things is going to happen. One, hopefully, maybe they might make it through, and you know, this might be one or two incidents might have, uh, unfortunately, might have happened in your youths, and they're able to, you know, to overcome and not allow this thing to hinder them, and all, you know, and they, you know, be, go out and to live normal lives uh, like men. All right. Or the other pro, or the other downfall is that they fall prey to this type of lifestyle, you know, and then they become full fledged homosexuals. You see what I'm saying? So you all want to talk about you don't have a problem with people being gay. You need to have a problem with being gay. Period. Because that's where it starts. That's the ones. That's the ones who continue is continuing this curse, continuing this damn disease. The disease continues to spread. As long as you got you know gay men out there, they're the ones that are molesting these young boys, and those young boys turn out become men, and then it, the cycle continues to go on and on and on. So you want to talk about you don't mind a man being gay? How do you think those men became gay? Another gay man molested them. You see what I'm saying? So stop saying you don't mind people being gay and all this bullshit. That's the whole damn problem. You know what I'm saying? You need to be, you need to mind all of it. You can't just mind some of it, you know? You know, you all want to pick and choose because you all want to dance around and you want to please society. 
You know what I'm saying? As far as I'm concerned, you are going to get to the point that you're going to have to say, fuck society. Excuse my language. Okay? Because society is not going to be one to save your, save your life or your souls or your children. You know, we're heading in a time right now, in less than a couple of years, this world is not going to be the way it is. You know, so many hor horrendous, horrible things that are going on right now is creeping up all around you. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, your children are going to be, they're being snatched up right now, right underneath your noses. And none of you all are even paying attention or understanding the severity of it. You know, every time you turn around, you hear some, some, somebody got killed, somebody died. You know, or some, you, or, or a, a bunch of other children have been discovered that have been, been have been uh, molested all of this time. You know, I mean, people, you can't have a problem with just, you can't just say you have a pot, a problem with a part of this, a part of the problem. You have to have a problem with all of it, okay? Because if we didn't have all this, all this homosexual agenda that is being allowed to go on and being encouraged and promoted, we wouldn't have this problem with pedophiles, okay? We wouldn't. So you can't take away one plus one equals two, baby. That's just the way that shit goes. All right, so here we go. Um, the other thing I want to talk about that really is also to blame in this mess is the church. The black church in the community. You see you pastors out there that are collecting 501c3s, you all are going to hell. Okay? I'm just going to say it just like that. All right? Because in Zechariah chapter 11, verse 17, <clears throat> Woe to my worthless shepherd who deserts the flock. May the sword smite his arm and right eye. Let his arm be wholly withered and his right eye utterly blinded okay that's for the pastors and that's also for all of those men out there like bombada africa bombada that's for african bombada too because anyone that takes up a position to become a leader or a role model or somebody that you say that you're going to be leading and guiding uh human beings or individuals children or whatever it is you are taking a position as, as a shepherd because that's what you're doing. You're leading and you're guiding and you're feeding uh, uh, it, these individuals, these human beings, okay, the flock, okay, to become better individuals, all right, and that they may uh, follow a proper, you're supposed to give them a proper example and tell them the proper example. So, therefore, this burden lies on you as well. Here, here's, what, here's the problem, okay, so one of the problems in the church uh, has been for a long time and I think I mentioned this in one of my other segments that you know the church does will never preach or emphasize or reiterate or stress or reinforce Leviticus uh, chapter 18 verse 22 um, as I stated for you before okay my Heavenly Father he's very serious about his word all right. Um, I think I. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. I think it's, it is 18. I know it's 18, but it's 18, chapter 22. A man should not lie with a woman. A, a man should not lie with a male as with a woman. Okay, and that is something uh, that should have should be a doctrine that should be preached in the church at least twice twice a month consistently. And consecutively okay because there's so many things to be preaching and when you have your Bible studies all right reinforcing to the men in the church <clears throat> but these things are not happening so much so that you have homosexuals uh, men who acquire who are who are the choir um, who are in charge of the choir choir directors organ players you know, you have homosexual, active homosexual men walking up in the church. Now, this is to tell you all people, you, uh, you all really think that uh, this church system you have down here on this earth, okay, that the, my father Yahuwah, that his presence is all is in, you never, 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 okay? It's not, the spirit that's in the church is not the spirit of Yahushua, I'm going to tell you right now. He said, you people seek him daily with your mouths 
You seek him daily, but your heart is far from him. Okay? Because you have, the, you have there's no way any pastor, any legitimate pastor, will allow a man to be a choir director of his choir or organ player or playing any kind of musical instrument in the church and knowing he's an open homosexual, knowing damn well what these scriptures say. Now, you uh, you think that the most high Yahuwah is someone for you all to play with? You all have no idea what you all are playing with, as I said before, okay? You all are in great danger, okay? And the way the pastors have preached Yahushua and the Father Yahuwah, you all call him God. It is you have they have given you a passive Elohim Father Yahuwah. Okay, and he is not passive. Alright? He is mighty, he's strong. Okay? And he is adamant. He is terrible. Okay? When it comes to his word. Okay, he is a great mighty Yahuwah, Yahuwah of war. You do not understand. Alright? You men are like breath. You are going to be you are going to be carried away. And you pastors, you pastors are to blame for this upsurge in these homosexual men in our black community. You pastors are to blame for that, okay? Because you go to you go you go you go to you uh you uh, on church on Sunday. And I don't know what sermons you'll be preaching, but all the nonsense and the crime and the things that are going on in the community, you all close take a blind eye to it because you all are packing your pockets with five hundred one three C's. Because you don't have to pay taxes. And you got the Jesuits and the um, Zionists overseeing your asses. And the government and the powers to be controlling you. Alright? You have sold your people out. Just like Martin Luther King sold us out, you sell us out too. And you all will pay the consequences for it. You're paying right now. Because you're the reasons why most of our young black men, one of the reasons why our black men have have engaged in these in this type of behavior. At least if you all are, are preaching it in the church, at least it will discourage a majority of them. At least it will make them think twice, okay, to what the consequences is if they engage in this type of behavior, okay? So you all are going to pay for that. You really are. Um, and this goes again. It's in Revelations. All right? Revelations 21, verse 8. But as far for as but as for the cowardly, the faithless, the polluted, as for the murderers, the fornicators, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and all liars, their lot shall be in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Alright? You all better know this. You better stop being a coward. You better start standing up for what's right. You better gain and get some kind of, uh, as they say, your, well, I even want to use the word balls because that probably, that's probably not an appropriate thing to even say in this segment because of the way you all men are. You all men are disgusting. It is. I can't even begin to understand how a man could um, uh, do what he does. Even you all men put your mouths down there. Okay? This is a place of waste. Okay, this is a place that, you know, is designed only for nothing but pure uh, bacteria, feces, and you all don't even care. You simply don't care, no matter what the consequences is, long as you fulfill your lustly, detestable desire. That's the only reason why uh, you do it. You don't even care. The other thing, too, I want to talk about. You see, you parents, you parents need to wake up. You need to wake up and watch your children, especially, I don't even want to say especially your boys, because the young girls, you know, the little girls are just as, you know, they get molested just as much. But I want to say at this point in time, the, at the rate things are going, and considering this totalitarian gay government that we are under, the boys are at greater, greater, even greater risk than some of these of the girls right now, okay? You mothers today, you have been lulled into being so carefree with your children. The system has taken away all 
our your parental rights to a very certain degree. And you all have allowed them to do it, right? You don't complain. You just let this system tell you what to do, how to do it. You agree with the shit. You all are afraid of this government, okay? And the majority of the reason why you all are so afraid because you are on the wrong spiritual track. You're praying to the wrong Elohim, Yahuwah. You're not praying to the Yahuwah of Jacob, uh, Abraham. You may be praying to him, but how are you praying? Are you really praying to him and fulfilling all of his words? You can't do part of it, okay? And if you're praying to him, because you know what? They say the righteous to go wrong, go wrong, go around like a roaring lion, all right? And if you're righteous and you're following the right path and doing the right thing, the, the enemy got to get out your way because you got the Father Yahuwah with you, okay? You do. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Um, the thing is, uh, um, please, I want to just pause for a second. We right back. Um, okay, I'm back. I'm sorry. I just had to um, take care of something really quick. So, okay, um, as I'm saying, you know, you know, you parents, um, you know, you don't discipline your children and um, some of you do, some of you all is uh, what you discipline your children for most of you all uh, you all yourself have not been raised properly right um, you all didn't get the, the proper discipline you should have had yourself you all the other problem too that I have uh, that I know is that many of you all do not encourage your children to pray you don't encourage your children to, to understand and learn, uh, seek the Heavenly Father. Maybe some of you all do, but I have to say at the rate the way things are happening with our youths, you all are not encouraging your children to pray. The majority of well, you all are praying yourselves probably. Okay, because I don't know what kind of spiritual foundation any of you all really have. Many of you all don't have any at all. Most of these young guys don't even have any spiritual foundation. They believe in God, they know about Him, they call Him God. But other than that, that's, it, that's all they know. They are aware that they may be or may or may not be aware that there is a sin to be homosexual. And, and if they are aware, they probably don't even care. They probably don't understand the consequences of engaging in that lifestyle and what it's going to cost them. Okay? The devil has made sure to not make, you, make these black guy, young men understand and know what, how the detrimental detrimentality of them engaging in that type of behavior and that lifestyle, okay? So, um, and you know, the other thing too I wanted to talk about today, um, I went out and, um, of course, you know, I see another, a young, another black young man, there's so many of them out there with their pants like that, and I have to grit my teeth every time I see them because um, you know I said wow you know you already know I like I said every time you see somebody you, you know what befalls them and um, you know what what their future is going to be okay and uh, I, you know I ran into this guy young man young black man and uh, I started talking to him and explaining to him you know asking him you know does he you know was he down with that type of lifestyle? And, you know, he's saying he's not, but, um, but yet still his, he has no pants, he has to hold his pants up in his hand. And, you know, his pants is practically falling off his ass. And he has to walk like a duck to prevent his pants from walking, actually, fall, you know, falling down to the floor. Because that's how you, most of these young guys do it, right? Um, some of them may wear a belt uh, and make sure they wear the, tie the belt underneath their ass. Uh, so the, to prevent the pants from falling off their ass, falling on the floor, right, on the ground. Um, you know, even with all of these things, you, you, this shows you how unintelligent our young black men are, right? Why would you, how is it, how could you really choose to wear your pants like that, having to go through all of this uh, difficulty in walking, and trying to, you know, um, just walk 
you know, normal in, in, in a normal way, you know, um, all for the sake that you have to go along and you have agreed to go along with this agenda, right? You, to be a part of this uh, type of um, lifestyle that's being promoted, right? So, you know, and I'm talking to him, and I told him about the consequences. I said, you know, I told him, he just said, you know, it's more dangerous to be a homosexual than it is to smoke cigarettes. And I also told him, this is more, more men are dying from homosexual activities. I told him all, I tried to, I didn't get a chance to tell him all about all the diseases. But I wanted, I told him, I said, you know, you say you don't, you're not like that. Then why do you wear your pants this way? You know, if you don't want to, rep, if you're not representing yourself and you say you're not homosexual, why do you wear your pants? Which clearly uh, it is stated that, in, you know, anytime when you see a man with a pants on the ass, it is stating that you are available for homosexual activity. That's what you're available for. That's, that's the message that you all black young men send to each other when you all wear your pants that way. Now, maybe some of you all may not be that way because you are trying to just to be down with it. But why the hell would you want to be down with something like that? You know? Why would you want another, another boy, another man to enter you that way? You know, knowing you, uh, you all, I mean, you know that clearly that's the place where your, your feces come out. You know? Everything feels good coming out. You know, I remember when I'm um, being pregnant. For some reason, you know, I know these these white people, they're really some perverted people. When I when you understand the truth, you really see the the demonic and the um the um the perverseness of this society, right? Now, I don't know about I've seen a lot of uh births, you know, like women who have given births like like the old fashioned way. And I ain't never seen these women, other women having to put, stick their fingers in no, none of these women's anus. Every time I, at, when these doctors are being pregnant, they used to always have for some reason need to stick their finger up a woman's anus. They have a fetish with an anus, okay? I'm telling you all, this homosexual uh, type of behavior, it is, does come out of, it is a white sex. You all don't understand it. I mean, I've been um, listening. I used to watch follow up, follow this guy called Irritated Genie, and he really does a really excellent break a breakdown of the ephemization of the black men and just the whole history of homosexuality and and where it stems from, and you know um, the different uh, the uh, the whole meaning of it and the, there's um. Like a, a, a social status that that goes with this type of um, behavior that is associated with the Greeks, and you know, he really does give you a clear picture of it, right? Now, this all, this whole type of lifestyle, this is what the Israelites. Uh, suffered the consequences back then again with you know participating with the false gods and you know participating with the ways of Babylon all right these are all the ways of Babylon okay in Rome in Rome to tell you and I'm and this is all part of my other research which I'm going to include I am but I've been working you know I'm working on the segment I told you all that it's called false gods and um It's taking me a little time, okay, to compose this because I really want to have all the right information and, um, you know, I want to make sure I cover all my bases. But, you know, um, there's, there's a resource I had written down. I can't put my hand on because I didn't really have a plan to really include it in this segment. But um, what I wanted to say is just to identify the destruction of Babylon and the, and the whole, um, the, uh, to describe it, you know, Babylon is the foundation of Satan's kingdom, okay? 
and Rome, which is part of Babylon, you know, they made it, uh, they had a law that it was okay, um, it was okay for polygamy, it was okay for divorce, it was okay for, for men and women to be prostitutes. These things were okay. Um, just, just be, I have to pause for one second, I'll be right back. So, um, thank you, I'm back. So, um, yeah, you know, these things were permitted. There were, there were, um, it was a law that was um, passed and agreed on in Rome. This was, this was the law. This was the okay law. This was um, their way of life. So when you have laws like that, that's why I keep trying to tell people. People, you know, uh, a part of um, the Israelite, a lot of these Israelite camps out here, Israelite men overall, they are off cock, you know, and they still go on and they still try to hold a ground about, you know, it's good, okay to have multiple wives, and it's not okay. That's a form of polygamy. That is polygamy, period. But we're not, I'm not talking about that, so I don't want to get off on that. But I just wanted to point out that this whole uh, America uh, is the foundation of Babylon. We are living in Babylon. And this is all the doings of Babylon, okay? Um, and you all don't seem to really, you're not grasping it at all, all right? You're not grasping it at all. And, um, you, know, you know, I spoke to the young man, and I was trying to, you know, give him some knowledge. And he just looked at me. You could see in his face. He didn't care. He said he does something. He does ask him, do you do research? He said how he's done it, but you could see that he was extremely disinterested. And you could see that at the, with some of the things that I've said, hopefully it, it made, a, made him uh, at least have him think twice about if he is engaging in that kind of behavior. Um, but you could just see in his face that he really wasn't getting it and he wasn't making any connection. And, you know, this just speaks to how lost our black young men are. And that's why it's so easy for the enemy um, to, you know, snatch him, snatch them up, right? Because a lot of our black young men are lost, and boys are lost. And, you know, we have boys that are raising themselves. We have boys that associate themselves with little gangs. And then you have these, these men out here, these predators, okay, these gay predators, going out looking for young boys because that's what they want. That's the foundation and the root of homosexuality. You know, I mean, even though to now and days, you know, it has transformed, you know, uh, you have men and men either way, you know, whether it's young or old, but, you know, uh, there's a, there is a preference for young boys, you know. And, and when I talk about false God, I'm going to really go into depth of it because this type of behavior does go on in the, these Muslim cultures, in these Muslim countries, Afghanistan, Pakistan, uh, Bangladesh, okay, India, okay, I'm telling you, it, it, it's, it's terrible, you know, you, you know, you see these people and they present themselves and they're so holy and, and, they, and, they're, and they're so righteous, you know, but they're filthy, they practice the most filthiest things in these religions, they're cults, that's what they really are. And they're just breeding ground for, homo for homosexual activity and, and all of these homosexual predators. That's what it is. The devil has set this thing up this way. You know? He set it up this way. He is, he hates women. And that's why these cultures and these religions is shaped in the way it is shaped. Any kind of um, organization that has a total exclusion of women. You're going to have these type of things that occur. In Freemasonry, it's nothing but pure sodomites. Pure sodomites from the top to the bottom. That Alistair Crowley with him, with his hand, uh, his face between his hand, that rep rep is representing a man's ass bent over. Okay? You know, when I go out now and, uh, I never thought the time would come. You know, I look at black men so differently now. You know, when I see men walking now, you know, you actually ask myself, you know, is it just too 
buddies walking or is it two lovers walking, right? I mean, you, you know, you can't even tell. Any, you know, you, you really can't tell. I mean, sometimes, you know, you can tell. I mean, I can tell. You know what I'm saying? I can tell uh, uh, for the most part of it. Um, you can see that something, something changes in a man when they start behaving and engaging in these type of behaviors. It really does. That change, that curse starts to take effect. You know, and I just look at men so differently. You know, it's just such a, it's so sad. It really is sad. And you men are so lost and you are, you are under such a strong delusion. You all can't even see because you are taking pleasure in it. So therefore the Heavenly Father has sent you a strong delusion that you will be condemned. You will be condemned. You know, and that's just sad. And every time I see these young guys with their pants under their ass, that tells me, what their faith is going to be and where they're going to end up. And I just, you know, it just kills me. You know, our black race is, is suffering. It is literally dying. You know, we are being dismantled on all fronts. You know, if it's not, you have black men marrying outside the race and black women marrying outside the race, then we have our black men, the increase of black men, young men turning into homosexuals. What's happening to our race, people? The Father in Heaven is angry. You know, you all people think that, you know, it's just any old people talking to you. This is the Father, Yahuwah, is reaching out to you people. And you all are so blind. And your ears are so deaf. You can't hear or see. You know, he says, I am angry. He's very grieved. I am grieved much. He says he's indignated. He's greatly displeased with this world and with his children, his Israelite children. Of the things that you all are doing, the practices that you all are practicing. You know, why do you think this world is under arrest and duress? He is, this, you know, he said that the land will vomit you out, and that is exactly what the land is doing. The earth is, is, is vomiting out its inhabitants. Because you all are not doing anything right. You all are going against nature. You're going against the universal laws of nature that he has implemented in this world. You have chosen to follow the damn devil. That's what you have chosen to do. And he got you all in a mess of confusion. You know, you all thinking that the devil is right and the devil is okay. Oh, you all are such fools. You all are such fools. And you all are going to reap the consequences of your decisions. You know? This is serious. And it's going to get hot. It's getting hot. You all have been lulled into a false sense of security. You keep thinking everything looks the same because they keep making it look the same. But they're getting ready. They're getting ready. They got the fever camps. They got the army. Everything is up underneath you. And all they're going to do is just snatch you. And you are going to be just devastated when this thing goes down. And it's because of the things that you all are doing. You know, the Father is not going to help you. Because you have all now to turn from your ways. Turn. While there is time. You know? Oh. <sighs> um, you know, so many people are trying to reach out to, you know, our black um, people, you know, our sisters and brothers, you know, our Israelite sisters and brothers. You all are Israelites. And uh, you've got so many people making you believe you're this and that. But you are going to know. You're going to know in a minute. In an instant, in a twinkling of an eye, you're going to know. This is the march. We have to keep marching. Whether you all come in the line or not, whether you all choose to be real men soldiers, or whether you choose not to be. But nonetheless, we're going to march, okay? Because you all ain't taking all of my black men, all right, my young boys. We're going to fight. We're going to fight. This is a war, all right? And we're getting ready. There's an army getting ready. Trust that. Squad. And when you dig in the trenches, the soldiers like so you get in deep. Cause the only way to survive is basic time, and I hold me is to never sleep. Woo, 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 woo.
keep it strong out there, the rock is right here on the neighborhood streets. The more fuckers that just live and die, welcome to the belly of the beast. You gotta love me, the drum in your pocket, it's